Great, um, and thanks for that introduction. There are many people here who I recognize, and it's you know, lovely to be able to, to have a chat. Um, there's also a very strong panel uh, of experts that we have uh, in different areas who are going to cover different topics. So when I was talking with Roger about you know, what areas should I cover, he was saying, OK, could you be a bit challenging? Um, you know, could you help us stimulate the debate um, as we move forward? Um, so I'm going to do that. It's always very easy when you're challenging to come across as negative. Um, so I've got to tread a very fine line between uh, challenge here and negativity. Uh, in terms of a background, as David was saying, uh, I used to be the program director, the outsource program director of biz.gov. Business Link um, is the best known product of that service. Um, as part of that on identity, one of the things that we did is we implemented the business identity infrastructure with HMRC for agents and intermediaries. Uh, so looking at how you could use it, uh, a, uh, an identity, um, but as a representative of another person. Um, and that's particularly important in relation to HMRC because you have tax agents, export agents, etc. Um, other than that, the organization I work for, we do a lot in the space of identity. Um, so we run some of the largest biometric uh, identity schemes, uh, surprisingly for theme parks in America, uh, which has over 20 million IDs. Um, we are the facilitators of the Stork program, um, which is looking at pan-European. It's almost like IDA on steroids um, a a across uh, Europe in terms of facilitating shared I identities um, and a number of other programs. Gov Gateway, um, one which is uh, being retired and, and moved off for court to re being replaced by the IDA <coughs> program. So some, some good things there. So the thing that I'd like to look at actually is um, reflecting the topic today um, and also the GDS strategy. Um, so you, if you uh, have been to presentations with uh, guys like Mike Bracken, etc., um, they'll talk about the GDS strategy as having four key strands. Um, the first thing that they were tasked to do um, as a result of the, the model in Fox Review was to set up GDS. So that's done. That's the first one. Second one, uh, fixed publishing. Gov.uk is out there, big success. Um, that's done. Uh, fixed transactions, that's on its way. The exemplar program, 25 exemplars are working um, across government now. Um, uh, those services are gradually rolling out. And then the final one is go wholesale. Um, and it was interesting being in government around the time of the Martha Lane Fox Review. There was quite a substantial debate as to whether government should have a website at all. Um, is government the right organization to be providing these services, or should these services be wrapped up into other services? Um, so I think a good example might be uh, car tax. And that's a really interesting example from identity. So I was around at the time when car tax was taken live, and I remember the conversation with DFT and going, what are you going to do about identity? And they were saying, well, we're not. I was going, what do you mean? You, you've got to do something. And they were going, well, you know, our job is to make sure that every vehicle has a tax disc. Um, a, a vehicle excise duty license. Um, if someone pays for it, we don't really mind who pays for it as long as someone does. So if out there there are people who want to go onto our online website, pick registration numbers at random, <laughs> and start paying for them from our side, that's good. <laughs> we're, you know, we're quite comfortable with that. Um, and I think that's an interesting aspect of identity. Then you start to move forward and start to say, you know, taking that example forward, in a go wholesale environment, how might that work? So in a go wholesale environment, that might work that an organization like the RAC, for example, might send you your tax disc. Um, so I'm a member of the RAC. Um, there's no, you know, if government wants me to put a small round piece of paper in the window of my car, perfectly happy to do that. Um, but personally, I'd rather get it with my RAC um, information or my automobile information. Or you know, maybe it's something that could come with the MOT. Um, and I think that's where we're starting to see uh, government services starting to almost like begin to evolve. Um, interestingly, I see social care as the area that is almost like pioneering this type of approach, where what you're starting to see is individuals taking control of services, services delivered by multi-agencies, but the individual in control um, of those services and able to choose from a range of providers. Um, and I think government services, in terms of moving wholesale, has exactly that opportunity that, you know, there's no reason why I can't, you know, pay by direct debit, um, get my emergency assistance, get my car tax, um, get my MOT booked, you know, all of that stuff that I need to do 
uh, because I'm required to do it, uh, done as part of a single package provided, provided by an organization and an organization that has been licensed by government to do it. So in that context, I guess the question is, how does EID play out? Um, and that, I suppose, is the, is the challenge um, that I wanted to bring today, is to say, okay, we're moving to an EID uh, model. Uh, government has a vision of wholesale services. Uh, in providing those wholesale services, so if I was, uh, for example, RAC, how might I take advantage of the government ID scheme and what would I want? And I think there you start to look at, well, what is the purpose of, of EID? Um, so a key part of the purpose um, at the moment is kind of mixing the needs of users, um, user need, very important within a GDS context and the design of services, but also government needs. And so EID, for example, is looking at things like, well, it's allowing me to submit and interact with government. So that's the first level. Um, it's allowing me to prove entitlement to something, whatever that entitlement is. Maybe it's an entitlement to travel. Um, and then you get to the sort of the far end of the spectrum where it's allowing government to identify me and deal with issues like fraud, um, defense, security, and those kind of things. So in a commercial context, that's quite interesting because most commercial organizations are actually not probably too bothered about those last few, about the fraud, um, about the security, etc. Those mechanisms will already exist. Um, so credit card fraud is well understood um, and there are measures in place to deal with that. Um, so it then comes down to saying, okay, well in that context, is it the case that actually what the, the government EID scheme can do is provide a better way of allowing organizations in the wholesale context to interact with users by blending all these different services together so that you can create a package uh, which makes more sense to the user, so I only have to do things once instead of doing things once with EVLA, once with the MOTA people, etc. Um, and so that was the perspective uh, that I wanted to bring in terms of looking at where EID may go in the future.